in 2022, the President of the Republic of South Africa, in his State of the Nation address, mentioned that South Africa will be reviewing the entire visa system to make it easier to foreign nationals and investors to apply for visas such as tourist, business, and work visa. To give effect to his decision, the president appointed the former director general of the Department of Home Affairs, Mr. Mavuso Msimang, to the Operation Vulindrela project, a report with recommendations was tabled uh, to this effect. This report contained four process recommendations and four policy recommendations. In other words, in the process recommendations, the change of processes with the Department of Home Affairs is engaged with whenever they process visas. And in the policy recommendations are uh, policies that need to be changed new ones, not that need to be added. But unfortunately, some of the recommendations a change of law. Can't change a law in the recommendations. So I do notice some media houses know about the recommendations and they might be confused why they are not on the amendment regulations. And I'm, I'm trying to explain that nobody changed a law through a regulations. It's not done like that. Regulations are based on the laws. So if you need to change the law, you must amend that law. And I'm sure you are aware that in terms of immigration laws in the department, we are busy with the process of the white paper where we are saying we are going to repeal uh, uh, most of the laws that work in the area of immigration, being the Citizenship Act of 1995, the Refugee Act of 1998, and the Immigration Act of 2002. So most of the changes will appear there. For now, we are only making changes that can be changed through regulations. And, and so those changes will find them in terms of four process ones and four policy ones. Uh, one of the new things that has been recommended is the introduction of a remote work visa, uh, which there's been a, a, a call for a remote work visa because it's very important. And I want to explain exactly what it is. There are people who want to stay in South Africa, but while they are working for other countries. In other words, they are not employed by South Africa. They are employed by other countries, mostly in the fields of auditing, IT, and finance. Those areas you can do them for your employer while you are not in this part in that particular country so we allow them the remote work visa to come and sojourn in south africa while they are working for those particular countries and and maybe people may ask what's the advantage to the country the advantage to the country is that these are high earners during that period when they are working they will be a uh, a uh, 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 spending money in the country, they'll be staying in hotels, they'll be hiring people, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why it's important. And that's why the salary they earn is also very important. Nobody's going to get a remote working visa if they, less, they earn less than 1 million uh, South African rents in, in terms of their salary. Uh, we also introduce the point-based system. For general work visa, as contemplated in section 92 of the immigration act and I, i've noticed that there was also a bit of confusion in this regard it might be important for me uh, to read for you what section 192 of the immigration act says in order for you to understand uh, what we are dealing with here uh, Uh, 
can you can you try to get it for me here so we've introduced a point-based system to general work visa and i've seen that there have been some confusion between the general work visa and the critical skills uh, visa i want you to understand the differentiation between the two uh, section 19 two the heading there is in the immigration act number 13 of 2000 the heading there is work visa it says a general work visa may be issued by the director general to a foreigner not falling within a category contemplated in subsection four and who complies with the prescribed requirements there are two issues here they say anybody who is not falling within the category of subsection four of this section 19 uh, that person and who complies with certain prescribed requirements will get a general work visa and i think that confusion uh, sort of uh, 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 was seen in quite a number of media reports now your first question is what is this subsection for? Subsection four of section 19 says, subject to any prescribed requirements, a critical skills work visa may be issued by the director general to an individual possessing such skills or qualifications determined to be critical for the Republic from time to time by the minister, by notice in the government gazette, and to those members, uh, it, that, that, that this other part is not important. What they, are mean, they mean is that the minister on a frequent basis will issue a critical skills visa to particular people. Now it is reported that this critical skills visa have been done away with. And that worries us a lot because it keeps on being repeat, repeated. We haven't done away with a critical skills uh, uh, a visa what we are doing is that we have just changed the manner in which it was done in the past a critical skills visa was issued every four years the minister of home affairs is supposed to gazette skills that are critical to the economy of the country but home affairs does not have the capacity nor the knowledge nor the skill to know what is required what Home Affairs does is to go to the Department of Higher Education. The department usually asks the Human Science Research Council. The Human Science Research Council will work with other institutions, including the Labor Market Survey, to put up a list of skills which they think are critical for the economy of the country. And some people believe a critical skill is that which is prestigious. If I've got a PhD in some particular area, it ought to be a critical skill. No, it's not. A critical skill is that which is critical for the functioning of the economy. But there are few South Africans, and that, that's the key word. There are few South Africans who can do that work. And so we are forced to go beyond the borders of this country to look for those people with such skills. That's what is called a critical skill. Once, once the profession you have got appears on that critical skills list, which will have been gazetted by the Minister of Home Affairs, and you get a letter of employment, then Home Affairs is forced to give you a critical skills visa. It's, it's, it's one of the easiest visas to give. And we don't usually waste time, contrary to belief, to give a critical skills visa, because all it wants is, is the profession to which you belong, gazetted there in the government gazette, that's one. Number two, has any employers given you a letter of appointment that they need you to come and work in South Africa? Once you give those, then we give you a critical skills visa. So there's no way we can cancel it. It's not necessary, it's still important. All we did was that we can no longer wait for four years to recognize a skill as critical. The minister does it as is required. In other words, if any institution come to prove to us that a particular skill is, is critical, then we, we can set it. For instance, 
after the Gazette was passed in 2022, yes, in February 2023, we had to Gazette certain professions in the healthcare system, certain types of nurses and certain types of, do uh, of doctors. Later on in September, the Minister of Agriculture showed us that the issue of veterinary surgeons, veterinary doctors is very important. It's a critical skill. Then we gazetted it. We never waited for four years. So these are some of the changes that we are doing. Now, the second thing on what I've read here on subsection 19, subsection 2, is a person gets a general work visa if they comply to certain requirements. That is in the act and it's one of the things we've changed. What are the certain requirements? Those requirements for the general work visa are found in regulation 19, not section 19 of the act. I mean, uh, sorry, not regulation 19, regulation 18 of the act, 18.2. And I want to read it to you to understand. It says an application for a general work visa shall be accompanied by one, a letter issued to the prospective employer by the Department of Labor to the effect that a certification has been able to be issued to the department confirming that despite, despite a diligence, the prospective employer has been unable to find a suitable citizen or permanent resident with qualifications or skills and experience equivalent to those by the applicant, by the applicant here being the foreign national. So it means the Department of Labor must be satisfied first that the employer has searched. Now you will agree with me, that's a very tedious job. It wasn't done in most cases. You can go and check in the hospitality industry, in domestic work, in agriculture, there are people who are general workers there, but they never went through this process. And there are already many of them. What we have now done is to do away with this process of having to go to the Department of Labor and proving that a South African cannot do the work. We have now done away with that. And we are saying, we are going to give you a general work visa based on the point system. That's where the point system come in. It has got nothing to do with critical skills. We give certain points. When those points reach a particular mark, then you get your visa. So you don't have to, in other words, we sidestep the Department of Labor. It's no longer going to be part of our, our process. That's what we mean by the point-based system. And I need to repeat it. The point-based system is about the general work visa whereby you no longer have to go to the Department of Labor and Employment, but based on certain points which you are going to allocate. And I want to emphasize the manner in which the points are allocated is still going to be gazette. It's not in the gazette now. For public comments, members of the public are going to have to comment. I, I thought this is very clear. So please, we did not do away with the critical skills list. The critical skill list still exists. The only change on the critical skills list is that it doesn't have to wait for four years. Any person who can show us that a particular skill is critical and we get convinced, we will gazette it. So we'll gazette again and again and again. That's the only change. But the critical skills visa stays. The general work visa, on the other hand, we no longer, you are no longer going to need to go to the Department of Labor. We are going to give you points. On the basis of that point, you have to reach a particular mark, then you get your, 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 your general work visa. And this is still going to be gazetted. That means the points. Now, the other thing is the introduction of the trusted employer scheme. What does, what do we mean by a trusted employer scheme? When a company is invested in South Africa and they want to employ certain people who come from another country, they are required to produce certain documents, including your qualifications and letters of work experience and many other issues. 
which you might require from many parts of the world. Those were collected by home affairs and it was taking time. Like even going to Sakwa and ask if this qualification is equivalent to a relevant qualification in South Africa. Those were tedious things that were, 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 were delaying visas, including police clearance and all that. Now, in the trusted employer scheme, what we say is this, employer, you are the ones who want this person to come from a particular country and work here. Go around and collect all these documents yourself. We in Home Affairs, we stand aside. You rush because you are the ones who want uh, this employee. The speed with which you acquire the documents will show how fast you want this employee rather than going to knock at the Department of Home Affairs. Once that employer brings this information, we don't question them on the basis of the information they give us. We give them, we put them on the trusted employer scheme immediately. But there's a proviso. We are going to do random checks. And if the employer is found to have misrepresented facts in getting that trusted employer scheme, then the employer will be taken out completely out of, of, of the scheme. <clears throat> and the trusted employer scheme has already started. Certain employers got them. And people might like to ask, how does an employer qualify for a trusted employer scheme? Which employers do you give? We have got certain categories. We don't give it to any employer. Number one, that employer must be prepared to invest more than 100 million rand in the country, 100 million or more in the country. And it must be proven, not just declare that our uh, are in the, uh, a meeting somewhere or in a press conference declare that I'm going to invest 100 million. We must be able to prove that 100 million has been invested. If you invest less than 100 million, you won't belong to the trusted employer scheme. Number two, you have to employ 100 people or more. And out of the people who have employed, 60% must be South Africans, not less. Otherwise, we won't put you on the trusted employer scheme. 60% of the people you employ have to be South Africans. And there must be more than 100 employees in your company. If you have got less than 100, it means your company is too small to belong to the trusted employer scheme. Number three, we want skills transfer. Whatever you are going to invest in South Africa, and you want certain people from other countries to run your investment, South Africans must benefit. So you must show us a plan that you are going to transfer skills to South Africans, including even financing those who might need to degrees and all that. We want that from that employer. For the sector in which we are investing, we're not going to give a trusted employer in any sector. We've put number one on the list, energy. You know that South Africa has got an energy problem. We want investors who are coming here, who, has come, who are coming to invest in energy, especially energy generation. Then, then you belong to the trusted employer scheme. Secondly, those who are going to invest in infrastructure in the country, because you are aware we have got a problem of infrastructure, will give them preference over the others. Uh, it's not that the others are generally thrown away, but we give preferences to companies in energy and infrastructure. The last thing, the, the fifth one, your BEE credentials, the Department of Labor must show us, because we don't know how to do BEE credentials in home affairs, must show us what your BEE credentials are. And it's on the basis of these five criteria that you are given a trusted employer scheme. In other words, you are running your own game. The speed with which you will get people from other countries depends on you and no longer on home affairs. It depends on you how fast you collect that information to bring it to home affairs and get your, your document on the trusted employer scheme. Uh, I've already spoken about the frequent uh, updating of the critical skills. Now, uh, let me go to the issue of uh, publication of the amendment regulations. On the 8th of February 2024, the draft immigration regulations were published for public comments 
with the closing date of the 29th March uh, 2024. The final regulations were published in Government Gazette uh, number 50419 of the 28th of March 2029. A new amendment regulations introduced inter alia uh, the, the flowing. The, the removal of the requirement to submit a radiology report and review of the process of submitting a police clearance certificate. Uh, in order not to confuse you, with the trusted employer scheme, all these documents, radiology report, police clearance, the employer will get them on their own. But not every employer belongs to the trusted employer scheme. So those ones, what we have done, we have removed these requirements, for instance. The radiology report was introduced long ago when TB was regarded to be a big problem. And our argument of removing it is that you are aware that in terms of TB, South Africa is right at the top of the list. And so there's no point in requiring radiology report from people of other countries who have removed it. On the issue of police clearance, it was a situation where for the past five years, all the countries worked with, you have to go and get the police clearance. This has been reduced to only 12 months. Only in the country where you have worked for the past 12 months, you must go and get the police clearance report. If you have worked in other countries 12, more than 12 months before, then that's no longer needed. We also include in the modernizing of IT systems, that's very important, and increasing the capacity of the immigration branch, that's also important. Uh, the the, the misleading articles in some papers, in various papers, as I've already said, which worried us to call this press conference is the issue of doing away with critical skills, which I've already repeated twice, that it's, it's not removed. Uh, now, <laughs> these amendment regulations which were passed please, on the 28th, many of you will have read in the papers that uh, there was a meeting of NETLEC where uh, the, the process was questioned because uh, it so happened that the gazetting on the 29th happens a day before the closing date and NETLEC actually demanded that we withdraw uh, this process because uh, we cut it by one day, even though the process has been going on for 60 days. I, as the minister, agree with them. And, and, and believe maybe it was ill-advised to Gazette at the time as we did. It does nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong in, in correcting what we think have been done wrongly. So we do agree with NETLEC and we realize that uh, we, we, uh, I personally maybe was ill-advised to have allowed that to happen. And, and so it will be important for, for me to listen to those who are raising issues. Now, for that reason, these regulations are being withdrawn, and I think we'll withdraw them tomorrow in the government gazette. The regulations published on the 28th of March uh, will be withdrawn simply to rectify this small error, not that we're going to change them. And then in the process, we will change uh, other smaller issues which we've picked up, which may not have been understood. Uh, now, but we want to emphasize the amended regulations as the president has intended are very important to make much easy to obtain the visas. And this will in turn promote investment in our country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. We will now open the floor for questions. Um, I'll take the first round. Um, please identify yourself and the media house um, you represent, and then you can ask your question. Um, do we have a question? Yes, ma'am. Hello, thank you, Minister of the Press Conference. My name is uh, Jasmine Samoko, and I'm here. Sorry? Yeah. Your name again? Jasmine Sarwoko, hello. Uh, I'm here for the Foreign Correspondents uh, Association with my colleague, uh, Romain Chanson. 
And uh, we would like to know, because um, now that we've all applied for our visas, et cetera, um, there was a circular that um, was issued about the extension of temporary concession and respect for foreign nationals in light of the backlog and processing outcomes on applications, visa applications. So um, I would like to know that uh, whether the, you've got, um, well, in, the, in this um, extension, um, it is said that everybody who's applied for their um, long-term visa, be it a business, work, study, whatever visa, um, as of the date of the um, 30th of um, November 2023, um, is um, allowed to exit and enter the country with the VFS uh, receipt in order to give evidence that they have applied for um, a visa renewal. What is happening to those who have um, applied for their visa renewal after the 30th of November in 2023. Will the extension be granted uh, for, for those people as well? Okay. Is there another question? Yes, sir. Yeah. My name is Roma from uh, the FCA also. I would like to understand if the remote work visa replaces the long-term visitor's visa. What? Sorry, what? what is it? You said this woman from. Sorry, your name again? Romain Chanson from the FCA. From me. What is FCA? Foreign Correspondent Association. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Does I want that? to know whether the remote working visa is replacing the long term visa. Or visa. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned foreign correspondents, foreign journalists. Okay, ma'am, you had a, your hand up. Uh, thank you, yes. Um, it's Hilary Jaffe here from Business Day. Uh, Minister, thank you very much for those clarifications. That is really very useful. I appreciate it. And um, I was wondering if you could provide us with some up-to-date data. Number one, on the backlog. Uh, I think there, there certainly has been some confusion over the past year or so because in... In November, it was reported that there was a backlog of, I think it was 74,000 visa applications in uh, earlier this year. I think you said, no, there was back, the backlog of work visas was no longer, um, it was just 40,000 left. So I wonder if you can clarify specifically, um, the, is there still a backlog of work visas and how large is that backlog? And secondly, I wonder if you could provide us with data as up-to-date as you have been for the last year or even two or three years on how many applications for visas have you had under those work categories. That's the critical skills visa, the general work visa, and I think it's a business visa, which cover broadly what we would call skilled work visas. How many applications have you had in, say, 2022-23, and what proportion of those applications have you approved? In other words, how many of those visas have you actually granted in the last year? You said critical general work and... Critical general work, and I think it's the business visa, but even just critical and general work, which are the two main categories you've spoken of today. Um, and I ask because in... Um, uh, in Mabuso Misimang's report, he did provide numbers on on how many work visas had been granted, but that only ran until 2020 or 21, I think. And I would really appreciate more up-to-date figures on how many visa, work visas we have in fact granted in the last year or two, and what proportion does that represent of the applications that you actually received? Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah. William Momoto from SAPC TV News. Uh, Minister, with any qualifications on the rise in the country, is uh, verification of qualifications going to be the responsibility of the department or the employer? Thank you. Um, we'll take this set of questions and then we'll come 
You mean uh, you mean those you mean the trusted employer or any employer? The trusted employer. Trusted employer. Yes. Yes. Okay, Steph, we can respond to this one. Yeah. The, the first question is about the directive for visa extensions, which unfortunately was not part of this press conference, but I realize it's very important. And I think I've made many statements about this issue. For some reason, they are not reaching uh, the depth of the minds of people. I said it was very unfortunate that uh, such a directive was issued because most of the issues on that directive were already happening. And this is what I explained. If you apply for a visa in home affairs, whatever type of visa, and you have not yet got a response, but when you apply, you are given a receipt. If the response, ex excuse me, if the, 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 the time of that visa expires, the time for which that visa was issued, if it expires because you, before you get the re response, the receipt works as an automatic extension. In other words, you don't have to worry that, oh, home affairs is delayed, now my visa has expired, what am I going to do? When you've already applied, because we have already got a receipt, that receipt will work as an extension. Until home affairs responds to you, to say yes or no. Once they, if they say yeah, no, then it means your visa expired this travel. If they say yes, then you get a new visa. But before that response, the receipt, just the production of a receipt. Now, this directive was issued, unfortunately, because of the belief that we have got a new baby on the block. The, the border management authority and the border guards who may not understand these systems, they were trying to explain to them that, look, when a person come with a receipt, don't stop them, etc. I saw in some newspapers or in some media houses where they're saying the border guards have uh, uh, totally refused that they don't follow what the minister is saying. They followed a directive. And uh, it, it surprised me which which border guard will say that because we we agreed on these issues with the BMA commissioner. He was part of it, that commissioner. We sorry that we issued this directive. Please just inform your border guards. It was supposed to be an internal matter. Anybody having a receipt cannot be arrested or cannot be stopped from going through the border and back because they've got the receipt showing that they've applied. The fact that they didn't get the response yet is not their fault. And now when we read that some border guards say no, we, are, we don't go by what the minister said in parliament or in a press conference. We go by the directive. When the directive was issued by the department and was spoken to their commander, we, we get surprised where that came from. Uh, the, the issue uh, from uh, Romaine, uh, removing the working visa, well, the, sorry, the remote working visa, replacing the long-term visitor's visa. No, it doesn't at all. The remote working visa is specifically, you are a British, an American, a German, France, Indian or Chinese, etc. You are employed by that company. In this area, as I'm saying, most of the areas, I'm, I'm just giving an example, will be IT, will be auditing, uh, uh, will be uh, uh, other technical area, finance, for instance. You don't have to be in that country to audit their books. You can audit them wherever you are. Now, what is happening with the remote working visa? There are people who will say, look, I'm working in the U.S., I'm earning in dollars. I'm earning one million dollars. And if I'm in South Africa, one million dollars is much, much worse than if it's in the US. I'll be able to get value of my money. So I'm going to stay in South Africa for six months uh, uh, and work remotely from there. Now, what do we offer them to come here? Because they believe is that they are going to spend their money here. Imagine if you earn a million dollars in South Africa, how much is it? You are going to employ some people, stay in hotels, stay in, eat in some restaurants and do that. So what we offer you for the first six months of that remote working visa, 
you won't pay tax to South Africa. But if you want to stay more than six months, then you start paying tax. Whether you are paying tax in America or not, it's none of our business. It's between you and them. But we were saying we are giving you a remote working visa to come to South Africa. You will work for six months. You won't need to pay tax. But if you want to stay more than that, we'll still allow you. But the tax kicks in. So it's not replacing any long-term or visitor's visa, specifically for this type of people. And it can't be gotten by anybody, only people who can work remotely, because not every work will be, can be done remotely anywhere in the world. Uh, I'm sure you may be aware that it has been for a long time now that many big companies in the U.S. send their books to India for auditing, for people who are working there and uh, 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 they are auditors and they, they don't need as much money as they will be in the U.S. because life there is a little bit cheaper. They've been doing that for ages. So we are just formalizing it by saying, look, come with your employment from whichever part of the country, stay here in South Africa, spend your money here, you'll help to create jobs. The question from Hillary, uh, uh, thank you very much for, for, for this question. I've also tried my best, Hillary, to, to clarify this question. I don't seem to be winning. I don't know whether Yusuf and the DG have got the information we're looking for, but we repeated this many times. We do not have any backlog on critical skills, visas. And this has been reported many times that the country is missing critical skills because we take a long time. We don't have a backlog on critical skills visas. I told you how easy it is to get the critical skills visa. All we have to do is, here is my profession. Is it on the Gazette? Tick. Here is my letter of appointment. This, can, this company in South Africa wants me. Tick. And you bring them to home affairs. Why should there be a delay? about that. Now, the general work visa, I told you where, where the problem is and it was no longer being done. That we have got to go to the Department of Labor, prove to the department that you searched all over South Africa and you couldn't find any person who can perform that work. You want to look outside the borders of the country. That obviously will take some bit of time, but you can go to the restaurant, domestic, etc quite a number of people who are working did not even go through this. And so we are saying it's a legal requirement, which seems to be difficult or even difficult to enforce. That's why we are removing it, Hilar, and say, let's use the point system. And uh, in the point system, as I'm saying, I, I've got difficulty in explaining because, I mean, in, not that I don't know it, because we have not yet gazetted it. But we are going to look at issues like, if we give you this general work visa, what's your age? I've seen in the papers that they are complaining that the age is an intention to remove older people. Very far from that, you'll see it when it comes. <laughs> in fact, you'll be surprised what the, the issue of the age means. Secondly, what are your qualifications? You are not a, your qualifications is not necessarily a critical skill, but are you bringing a qualification here which we need? What if there are so many South Africans with that uh, qualification? Why should we allow you? What is your experience? Should we believe you to come and learn here when there are so many youngsters who have just qualified from universities? Should we allow you to come and compete with them? Or are you bringing some form of experience? Those are some of the things that we will we are going to consider. But as I'm saying, I'm just giving you snippets because this is still going to be uh, gazetted. Now, the backlog which you are talking about, which is confusing, which we <clears throat> changes all the time. This backlog is mostly, mostly about dependent visas, spouses and relatives. Now we are agreeing, uh, Hilar, we are agreeing that if I get my critical skills visa to come to South Africa, and yet my wife doesn't get any spousal visa, my children don't get uh, uh, study visas, etc. 
it might make it difficult for me to come because I'm being split from my family. We have accepted that. And we, we would like to correct them by saying next time, when you give you a critical skills visa, we must consider your whole family because you are attached to it. But otherwise, the backlog is on the dependency visa. And I'm going to give uh, 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 Yusuf some bit of time to explain why, why is it developing such a backlog? We've got a situation in South Africa where in our laws we are saying if you become a spouse of a South African, female or male, if you become a spouse, then you can apply for a spousal visa in South Africa. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we are reaching a situation where spouses are just created, where they don't exist. They are created where they don't exist, I'm repeating. Th there is something called a notorial. Yes, a notorial contract, which is allowed by South African law, where you come with a partner and you go to a notary general, Many some lawyers are notary generals, to write you a contract that you are staying together as partners, and you bring that to home affairs, they regard you as a spouse. The number of notary, notarial contract is increasing day by day. But when we send immigration officers to visit such families, they never found any spouse. They don't found any, and yet we've got a document here that we must issue a spousal visa because there's a notarial contract. And what is, is alarming us, these notarial contracts are growing in leap and bounds. Either. That's why you are finding this thing changes. This backlog is changing every day because the notorials are growing, 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 growing. And now... You can imagine immigration officers having to visit that family in the morning to see if there's really a spouse there. They don't find a spouse. They go again in the afternoon. There's no spouse. They go again in the evening where all spouses are supposed to be home. After work, there's no spouse. And they repeat that for six months, there's no spouse. What are we supposed to do? So this is a conundrum and a problem that we are going to have to change. Unfortunately, it's in the law and it's causing this backlog that grows in leaps and bounds. The, the backlogs about the critical skills, general work and business, it doesn't usually, we don't usually suffer that. But the reason that is people who have got critical skills, who are complaining, is because maybe it's their spouses. That one really, we shouldn't be giving them a tough time. Because yes, I, I've been given a letter of appointment by this company. I would like to come with my, 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 my family. And then uh, the family has to apply for relative visa, spousal visa, dependency visa. So we want to put them together. Yusuf, I don't know. I think you, you were able to add something here on the issue of critical skills, general work, business, in terms of the backlog. <laughs> Thank you very much, Minister um, and DG and members of the media. Uh, the Minister is absolutely correct. Uh, less than 10% of applications in both visas, as well as permanent residence, is in the categories of a business, um, general work, as well as critical skills. So that's a short percentage, small percentage of applications we receive in this regard. And uh, those categories is also part of our, our annual performance plan. Uh, performance plan. So it's prioritized. Um, you would note that um, in our performance plan, the turnaround time for critical visa is also four weeks only. Um, apart from the eight weeks for normal visas, we shorten that turnaround time. So we put a lot of focus and we have a dedicated team dealing with these three uh, categories, uh, as indicated, uh, because they are directly impacting on the growth in the economy, the creation of jobs, bringing business into South Africa. So that's where our focus are. So about almost 90%, if not more, of the applications in the backlog, as Minister has indicated, is in the relative category and the spousal category. Uh, there's a lot of abuse in this regard. Uh, and unfortunately, what delays the processing of those applications is the existence of the marriage. That's very difficult to determine. So many times the spouses do not live together. Um, it's difficult for our resources to go and do house visits, as ministers indicated.
and even the, the contact numbers and applications are not in existence. So that makes our task extremely difficult. And you could say that we could reject all of those, but then they become appeal cases and we just move the backlog from applications to appeals, which really does not help. So um, it's an enormous task we have. Uh, the good thing that um, that minister um, that we have now brought on board is to for provinces also to assist with the backlog. As minister indicated, one of my other tasks is in a province, so we are coordinating also extra resources from the provinces to focus on on this backlog, so that the incoming work can be um, attended to by adjudicators, uh, so that we can balance the backlog with incoming work and not create a new backlog. So it's a it's a it's a tough task we have. Um, we're also looking at uh, getting assistance for the verification of documents because that's mostly where the challenge are. Um, a bank, for example, if you want to verify a bank statement, the bank will tell you upright that they don't appoint staff um, to verify documents for home affairs. Uh, they have tight budgets as well and, and also efficient in the allocation of the staff. So we wait a long time for banks to, to provide verification. And we cannot, and I must repeat, we cannot accept any document on face value and then finalize that because a bank statement in paper says there is money. We have to do a verification. Uh, this is just some of the documents must verify. And that's where, where the, the, the challenge is. And with backlog applications as well, um, for example, a, a spousal visa of three years ago that's in backlog now, um, you most likely find that um, that to, to verify that marriage is even more difficult to trace the couples. Uh, so let me just say that on, on the statistics, the minister, we, unless DJ have it, but I think it's best if we have detailed statistics. And because we're sitting with the media, it's better if we by tomorrow provide that in absolute detail, the correct numbers with the percentages of approvals versus rejections. Uh, so I propose that that we rather provide statistics tomorrow, Minister. But as Minister has indicated, it's a backlog that's that's coming down. Um, it's a number that we have projectized. A team is working on that. The DJ has projectized uh, the backlog. Two separate teams, one dealing with incoming work and one focused on backlogs, including provincial officials being also brought on board to assist in this regard. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you, Yusuf. Yes, uh, 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 Hilar, we, the summary of what he's saying is we don't usually develop a backlog on critical skills, general work and business. We don't usually do that. The DG is just telling me, is it critical skills this day? Yeah, that he had said this morning as he has finalized them before coming here because i told you if it's critical skills you need only two things does this profession appear on the gazette list one two is there a letter of employment from an employer that's all you need that's why you could finish those states within a short space of time but you may find that they go to the to the press hillary and say the, there is a delay because they are speaking about the spouse, not themselves. Themselves is not an issue. The, the spouse, maybe, and the children and all that. That's why we are developing the backlog. And I'm saying it's unfortunate that in the act, they are separated. Spousal visa is section what? Section 11.6 or something like that. Yes, and some spouses, there is a section, I think it's 11.6 something where it says a spousal visa with a right to work. There are spouses who say, I want to accompany my spouse, but I must be given a right to work in South Africa. And with this high rate of unemployment, we found it difficult to allow that. And, and of course, it becomes a backlog. And I am aware of many countries in the world where the person will tell you, I'm here accompanying my husband, but I'm not allowed to work. If it happens in South Africa, it gets a very ugly term and all that and all that and attacks and all that. But there are countries that are doing that to, to, to protect their job markets, the inhabitants of that country, not to have a, a lot of competition in as far as work is concerned. We have already given the spouse who is coming with critical skills. I mean, uh, uh, the person who has applied for a critical skill. Now we have got to give the wife, we have got relative and all that. These are the things that are difficult which we think we are going to change the act. 
But the summary is the backlog that you are talking about is about spices, relatives, and dependence visas, not about the person who wants the critical skills visa themselves or the business visa. Because the, the department, the DTI, usually lodge a complaint. If somebody wants to establish a business here, firstly, they apply to DTI and they've got their list. When we delay to give them visas, DTI complains. They write us a letter and send us a list and say, these people want to establish businesses and you are delaying. So it's not easy to, to develop backlogs in, in, in those areas. Memule uh, Momotwa, the verification of qualifications, whether it's done by the department or the, the employer, it will be done by the employer if it's the trusted employer, if it's in the trusted employer scheme. They must verify and tell us that we have verified is true. But as I said, the trusted employer scheme is given on a big proviso. If we do a random check and found that we have misrepresented the facts, we have told us that this qualification is equivalent to this and that, and you find that is not true. We're not going to accept that uh, when you say, no, I made a mistake. You have got to be sure because we take it at your way. That's why it's called trusted employer. You are a trusted human beings and we are, we are giving you this visa based on the trust between you and, and them. So if you are not sure, you better not present it and say it's trusted. But for those who are not trusted employers, yes, we still have to verify. And the verification is done with SACWA, as you know. It takes a long time because it's outside the department. We write to SACWA and say, can you verify this qualification for us? It takes a long time. I, I happen to know it because even in government, sometimes you take a very long time to hire a DD, a DDG, a chief director, uh, it can be taken to cabinet uh, for DG and DDG for the cabinet to approve because we have got no proof of qualification from SACWA. Sometimes we wait for six weeks, even eight weeks waiting for SACWA. And uh, it's, it's one of the problems that Home Affairs is faced with with other employers. But as I'm saying, if you are a trusted employer, if you have to wait, it will be your own on your own volition. It means you did not acquire these documents quick enough and that's why you are waiting. You can no longer uh, 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 blame us. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Minister. Um, DG, I believe you want to make some additions on the trusted employer. <laughs> Thank you, Tabo. Uh, good afternoon, Minister. Good afternoon, members of the media. So that unit that the Minister was referring to that deals with critical skills is the Corporate Accounts uh, Unit, uh, Hillary, and uh, they process uh, all the applications. But also to say, Minister, with regards to the Trusted Employer Scheme, it's a one-stop shop. So you've got the DTI as part of that team, you've got the Department of Labor as part of that team, and you've got the Department of Home Affairs. So it stops you from going to the DTI to lodge an application. It stops you from going to the DEL to lodge an application. So they assemble at the Department of Home Affairs and process, which is why we're able to finalize 109 applications within a very short uh, space of time. And of course, out of the 109, 72 of those companies uh, were confirmed as part of the trusted uh, employer scheme. Now, what do they do on a daily basis? They also check with our missions all over the world to check for applications uh, that have been launched. I just thought I must uh, add that uh, for your time. Thank you. Thank you, DG. Um, but I believe we have questions on the WhatsApp platform. But first, um, let's take a question from the brother just behind you. Uh, Turkman has the representing Turkish media. Turkman. Turkman is representing what? Turkish media. Oh, Turkish media. Turkish media, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You mentioned about uh, big companies. President Ramaphosa also mentioned last uh, April about in investment conference. Uh, do we have any plan for uh, SMMEs, charity organization, NGOs? We have very historical, very established 
they are the, really, the foreign instance synonymous, they are very critical for job creating. Uh, more than the most, sometimes more than big companies. They create job uh, and they train the young entrepreneurs. And uh, they run education institutions and they go all very deep uh, township areas and they are, you know, educating and helping your people most of the time. Do you have any plan for these, these categories? Thank you. So what about them? What about SMMEs, the tech men? What do you want to know about them? Yeah, you know, in most of countries, people just go with their few hundred thousand dollars and they start uh, companies and they are really uh, critical people. For instance, in construction, you mentioned about construction, you need more critical skills in uh, workers in construction sector than investing in construction. You have already many multinational companies investing. Historically, you have already here, but you have very a short number of workers in construction sector for instance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mata, uh, thank you. I have three questions here from Elena Caputo, representing European Broadcasting Union and Ansa Italian Wire Agency. First question is, there are many people who requested critical skills visa in embassies in the Europe and simply do not get a response and they are left without a positive or negative um, response. Um, the second question from Elena is, can you please clarify if a critical skills visa can only be requested or obtained by, a, by an approved trusted employer? Last question from Elena is, can an individual apply with their skills, qualifications, and letter of appointment from a non-trusted employer? Thank you. I saw a hand that side, brother. So I would like to know uh, what is the backlog regarding visitors' visa, uh, because we have a colleague who's been waiting for two years to get a visa, and there are concerns that there are visa applications that are being destroyed or lost. So why is the backlog? So, so, so important for visitors. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Minister, thank you so much for clarifying and um, repeatedly uh, saying that the VFS um, receipt um, acts as an extension of your visa application. And I really appreciate hearing that, although you were not specifically talking about this today. <laughs> Um, I would just uh, want to also maybe suggest that in this case, um, if you clearly say that a VFS receipt um, acts as an extension of the visa application, this, is, this uh, could be put in writing and circulated again, because I think that um, the direction, which was meant for internal use, as you explained, unfortunately it has found its way to the public, um, now it's there in writing and everybody is um, a bit confused about the 30th November 2023 date you specifically state there. So if we would have in writing that everybody can travel in and out whose visa application is pending with their VFS receipt regardless of when they applied for visa renewal, I think that would um, do away with a lot of um, confusion here. And yeah, would that be possible? Thank you. Okay. One last question on the WhatsApp platform and then we'll let the minister respond. I have another question from Elena. Can minister clarify about people asking for critical skills visa from embassies and produce all the documents including SATCA? Uh, they are usually not given a receipt and not given an answer. Thank you. you just come again? Just, just repeat the question. Can minister please clarify about people asking for critical skills visa from embassies and not produce all documents, including SACA. They are usually not given a seat and not given an answer. Uh, yeah, can you answer? Did you? Yeah, maybe I want the yeah, let's start with this one, the last, the last one about visa, visa, then I'll come with the rest. This one of people asking about critical skills visa. Embassies. Embassies, yes. No, thanks, uh, Elena. Thanks, uh, Tabo. Uh, it's, it's a bit uh, strange because uh, it's a service that you pay for, and therefore you do get a receipt uh, at our missions. 
Uh, Oma Fez only has a presence in about 38 of those missions. The rest are missions that are run by uh, the Department of International Relations and uh, Cooperation and uh, DERCO. So in those uh, missions, uh, we utilize uh, officials from uh, DERCO and uh, it's a transaction uh, that requires you to have a receipt. I'll be interested to see if you can get details of this person who did not get a receipt but paid uh, for a uh, service uh, from uh, whatever mission. Unfortunately, it was not clear uh, which mission uh, it is. And on an annual basis, we do collect uh, money and it's uh, repatriated uh, by DERCO back uh, to the National Revenue Fund. And then uh, it, it's money that we sometimes utilize uh, uh, for home affairs activities uh, known as uh, self-financing. I think on uh, visitors' uh, visas, uh, I'm not sure whether you're looking for uh, specific numbers in terms of uh, the backlog, which is exactly what uh, Yusuf was saying, that uh, what we can do as we share with Hillary, we can certainly share with you details around that. But the key message that Yusuf was saying is that we now have a project team uh, that's working to clear those backlogs, capacitated uh, internally uh, by our own uh, officials. So we've had an offer from also the private sector that want to uh, come and assist, and we're working on the modalities with regards to that. Thanks, Tabo. Thank you, Yusuf. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Techman, the, 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 the trusted employer is only given to big companies, as we've said, that invests 100 million or more, that employs more than 100 people, 60% of whom are South Africans, that invest in areas that the, the, the South Africa needs most, as in energy, etc., now, I don't know why we must confuse it with companies as if they are not wanted in South Africa. There are no small companies that President Investment Summit and, and, and pledge. It's usually big companies. Now, the small ones are dealt with in different ways. And in this case, I'll, I'll give to Yusuf again. Yusuf, are you ready to speak about the startup visa? Because small companies may fall within that category. Yes, but before he responds, any company that is not on a trusted employer scheme, it doesn't mean it falls off. It simply means it uses other means rather other than the trusted employer. So Yusuf, maybe you can explain that. No, thank you very much, Minister. Uh, yes, uh, Minister is absolutely correct. Uh, the trusted employer scheme this was the first round. It's a pilot. It's a it's a new introduction of a a worldwide phenomenon that's that's taking place um, to have relationships with your employers. This is the first round. Uh, we're looking at taking a note, another cohort from May onwards. Um, so if you meet the criteria, uh, as the minister has clearly outlined, of course you can apply. But that's not the end of it all. Um, those who do not meet the criteria. A minister spoke, a DG spoke about the corporate accounts unit. There's a unit that deals with the trusted employer companies and a unit that deals with other companies. So that's also option for any SMMEs, NGOs to register with that company. Although they're not going to have the same privileges that we're going to give as we have the trusted employer scheme, because there we sign a contract with trusted employers, a MOU, um, but they will still have access to a unit called corporate accounts. But then, as Minister also indicated, uh, there was a new visa category that the presidency through Wuland Lela recommended. It's called the startup visa. Now, a startup visa, um, we, we, we then looked at that uh, and we found that we could fit a startup visa in the current business visas that's there. The business visa, in terms of legal legislation 14.1, speaks about a, a person who intends to establish a business in South Africa, as similar to a startup, can apply then, um, can apply through DTIC, uh, who works closely with us. And then there's also the, the element of an existing business can also apply for a business visa if you meet the criteria. So there's also possibilities there, but the important one is that startup visa that makes provision for any person who intends to establish or want to invest in a business 
can then apply under the regulation 141 of the Immigration Act. That is there. It's part of the Wulundlela report, and it gives that opportunity for any business, small business, who falls out of the trusted employer scheme category, can then slot into that category, or go to our large account unit and register there as an employer. We will also have a team that looks at those applications. So there are provisions. They are not out of it. There are provisions in different categories. And with the second round that we will, the intake that we will be doing from May onwards on the Trusted Employer Scheme, we then give opportunity because there's been a lot of interest, more interest from companies to join the Trusted Employer Scheme program. We'll open it up again to take in a second cohort. Thank you, Minister. Yeah, look, I, I don't want you to undermine the corporate account unit because when it was opened was that those in the corporate world come and queue with others, specifically because they establish business, they run the economy, they hire people, etc. So in the corporate account unit, as the DG said, you find people from labor, you find people from DTI, you find people from home affairs under one roof so that you don't have to go all over. So the fact that you are not yet a trusted employer does not mean you are going to suffer because the corporate account unit will still deal with you. And that will obviously will deal with SMMEs. But as Yusuf is saying, we are not going to stop there. We are going to continue with the work. The, the critical skills, uh, this question uh, from the European Broadcasting Unit, uh, the critical skills many people are, are waiting. Colleagues, look, I in the department, I have really repeated many times to my officials, I, I don't like the use of words like many, a lot, big, small, etc. I want to be specific. And I've asked this many companies, the only way to know that indeed we have delayed to give somebody a critical skills visa is for them to provide us the name so that we have seen because I'm standing here in front of you and telling that a critical skill once you appear on the gazette and you give us a letter of employment from your employer, we issue it immediately. There's no reason that we should delay. So if we say we have delayed for somebody, please give us the name. But what has been happening is this, and I'm repeating it. There are lots of people who claim this, that many people are waiting. And we say, please give us the list immediately. And the list is not there. Yusuf, I'm sure you can attest to that. Some of the complaints were lodged by BISA and BUSA, Business Unit South Africa, and say, no, so many companies want to come to invest in South Africa. They can't come because you, give, you refuse them critical skills list. We say, okay, give us the list. And the answer come and say, no, they can only give the list. Uh, you know, like last year, we were told in November about this, when we demanded the list, they say it can only be provided the following year. Surely if you go to the media and complain that somebody doesn't get the critical skill list, that person must be ready made there. Give us the name so that we see. They say no. We had a very big case here, which appeared in quite a number of print media and, 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 and electronic media about a, a gentleman who where was that gentleman from yusuf from germany. yeah from germany i'm repeating it because it pained me where it was reported all over how inefficient we are and all that only to find that the gentleman did not even apply in the first place there was no application but it was already all over the media that were delaying uh, critical skills and I, I i'm mentioning it because it was there and recorded and we tried to correct it the gentleman was hired by I, yeah, ECI, which is a, 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 yeah, a chemical company in mining. And he said, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to South Africa. Here is my letter of appointment. When we checked, he did not apply for critical skill. He has applied for a visitor's visa, which was given immediately. And then it expired. Then he made noise. But after applying for critical skills, we gave it. Our, after our name has already been dragged in the mud, 
We gave it immediately. And we gave it within eight days, if I'm not mistaken. Only, yes, only after applying. We took eight days only to give him that critical skills. But by that time, our name was irreversibly damaged in the media that we, 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 are, you know, we don't uh, want the economy to run and all that. Then immediately after that gentleman came with these others from, where were they from? Italian chamber, if I'm not mistaken, and all that. And we say, give us the list. No, I will give it in February. But it's November and you're already complaining. Why, why wait for February to, get, to give us the list? Give it now. Then thereafter, in February, we demanded. They said, Sia, you, you were the one who was communicating with this company, didn't you? Uh, yes, I, yes, I'm the one who was communicating with the Yes, what happened? Come here. <laughs> Sia is the director of communication. You must come here and explain to you because these are some of the things that pains us. Because when you see somebody in the something in the press, I tell them to solve it immediately. Just come and explain what happened. Uh, thank you very much, Minister uh, TG and uh, colleagues, uh, members of the media. We did have a in, an instance uh, where the chambers uh, of business uh, in Europe had complained that we were not uh, uh, processing their applications. Uh, we sent a request for them to pro uh, to to give us an update on the island, on the exact uh, to give a list a li on the list of the exact people who were who were not uh, <coughs> who didn't have the permits that they had applied for. We did not get that list in Jan in uh, in December. We also did not get it up until uh, the third week of uh, of January this year. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we are in the process of clearing uh, those uh, you know, those applications. Um, they are being handled by the by the unit that uh, the DG referred to. Uh, that is the corporate accounts unit. Thank you very much. The second question here on the line is whether critical skills are applied for only by a trusted employer. I think I've, I've responded. Critical skills have got nothing to do with trusted employer. Critical skills is any of the skills that have been gazetted. And once you get an offer of employment and your profession appear on that, we give you. What is making people complain, I'll tell you what. Because Homer first made a mistake, I think it's in 2014, where when the critical skills has been gazetted and you are staying somewhere in another country and you receive the gazette, you see the profession that you are in on that, you just rush to South Africa. It can't happen that way. We have stopped that. We said, you must be offered employment first. In other words, you must see that there is indeed a company that needs you to, for sure, to be sure that your, your skill is actually critical. If there's no company that will need, be needing you, you might be a highly qualified person, then it means your skill is not critical. Because why are companies not offering you any job? You might be an engineer with a PhD. That's a very, very important skill. But if there's no company that gives you a job in South Africa, if there's none, then why, why should we allow you to come here? For what reason? Just because we have got a very, you know, important qualification a phd or what there must be a company that needs you and we facilitate your entry into south africa by giving you that skill so critical skills is not only by trusted employers anybody can but the trusted employers can also apply for it because all the information that is needed they'll be able to acquire it on their own can a person apply from a non-trusted employer? Yes, I've already explained that. Any person can apply. It's not only trusted employers. Uh, the issue of statement of the website. Uh, Ma'am, I, I, I mentioned this in Parliament. It's not just in the media. I mentioned in front of Parliament. It's recorded there. We took that and put it on the website. That explanation that this is what's happening but we'll still look if there's any shortage. And then, and then there was a press conference where we said, because the people who were affected, we don't know them, we got very few. We are making a call that any person who was affected by this, please come forward. 
We're still waiting. Please come forward. If you have been stopped at the borders and you have had experienced a problem, please come forward. But we did, and we'll still look at what actually still needs to be published in that regard. Uh, there's a question here again from Elena. It says, people asking about critical skills work from... Uh, 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 from uh, embassies, isn't it? Can you correct me? Because I wrote embassies here. Oh, that's the one DG has responded to. Yes, he has responded to it that yes, because we we do work with embassies all over the, the, the world. They are, they are the people who are the first port of call when people are applying for these visas. Otherwise, then I think what I've been having, I've responded. Thank you. Thanks, Minister. Um, do we still have any further questions? Hilary? Thanks. Um, just two last questions from me. Um, Minister, are you prepared to commit to a timeline for um, how soon you will gazette a revised version of these regulations? You say you're going to withdraw the existing ones tomorrow. Um, when are you, and, and you're going to make some minor revisions, uh, when do you think you will gazette the new version? So that's just one question. And another oh. small question, on that list of criteria for the um, the point system, there is a, a criterion um, saying something like uh, the person must be able to adapt to living in South Africa. And, and I was just wondering what does that mean? Thanks. Yeah, let me start with the last one, Hilary. You are perfectly right. I was questioning it this morning. What actually it means is one of the areas that we are going to correct. Because you may not, how do you give points on that? I've asked uh, what the officials uh, meant, and Yusuf was trying to explain. I said, no. Uh, uh, they are talking about people who will easily come uh, to integrate better than others, like people who will have studied in the country, etc. But take it from me, it's number six on that list. We are going to change it when we read it. It was wrong. Uh, 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 please forgive us for that. It will definitely change. We we accept uh, 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 your, your, I mean, uh, your concern in that regard. When will we gazette? I think we'll do it next week. Today is Tuesday. Tomorrow we gazette the withdrawal officially. I think by next week we'll be ready. We, we really don't want to waste time because we are not changing the gist of this issue. We are just changing the process and, and, and follow up a a, a, a process as the law will say because somewhere corners were cut. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Minister. Um, colleagues, just one clarification. For for purposes of this media briefing, um, Yusuf Simmons should be referred to as the project lead in the implementation of the recommendations of the Wulin Jela. Um, for the for the Department of um, of Home Affairs, so I thought I should I should clarify that. Um, this brings us to the end of the media briefing. Um, if there are requests for one on one engagements, um, the minister is here, the DG is here. Um, yeah, we are available. Thank you. Is this yours? You sure? Yeah, that's, 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 that's